Uh, hello, uh, class. Uh, today, um, or rather in this um, recording, I'm teaching you two chapters, uh, one mutation, and the second is on um, genetic recombination or DNA recombination. The mutation um, is a major chapter, and uh, the next chapter, which is recombination, it's a small chapter and uh, maybe five to six slides. So this recording, once again, is composed of two lectures. The first part will be on mutation and the second part will be on genetic recombination. Okay. So a uh, piece of advice for mutation. Uh, mutation is very simple to look uh, study, but uh, it becomes interesting when you are um, going into detail. So try to have a holistic approach when you are addressing a question uh, or, or trying to understand the chapter on mutation. So from so mutation is what is mutation, right? The simple definition, change in the sequence of nucleotide, right? So for example, you're writing a paragraph, you're writing a sentence, and we all make typos, right? So the, those typo could have different implication, right? It could change the word, a, a changing of word could have an impact on the sentence, on the meaning you want to communicate. Uh, there are some words uh, which sound similar. For example, K-N-O-W, no, means to understand or to comprehend or acknowledge. Uh, and N-O, no, means negative, right? So they all, they both sound the same but the spellings are different, the meanings are different. So this is just an you know, uh, interesting example. So typos in any word can change the meaning, can, uh, you know, can change the sentence, can make, you know, uh, from the point of view of English lit literature, somebody who is grading can give zero for typos, spelling errors, grammatical errors, and they have consequences. So why? because we have to follow the rule, right? So our DNA also has alphabets as nucleotides, and there has to be in a sequence. If they're not in a sequence, as by nature or by inheritance, then there can be a problem because the communication could be wrong. If the communication could be wrong, it could give rise to diseases. So, through the, so the mutation could be change in one nucleotide, right? This change could be deletion, addition, insertion, or it could be an addition of 100 nucleotides, deletion of 50 nucleotides, right? But if you understand, I repeat, if you understand the impact of single nucleotide on the sequence of a gene, sequence of mRNA, sequence of proteins, then you will understand this chapter much better. So try to understand the overall impact, okay? So let's start this chapter. Um, so I believe you know uh, my office hours on Zoom. So, and we are reaching uh, almost end of the uh, you know, syllabus. So uh, feel free to stop by my office hours to ask questions. Um, so I, you know, that's very helpful. So, so a mutation as I defined, you know, uh, a change of nucleotide. And this change of nucleotide can alter the DNA sequence, it can alter the mRNA sequence, it can alter the protein sequence. So one, one nucleotide can have a very profound impact. So let's say, you know, our, our body, uh, in our body, there are millions, trillions of, trillions of cells, right? If the cells are mutated, then then um, the cells are mutated. Uh, the DNA is mutated and the protein is mutated and the cells can be diseased. So when a disease cells is dividing and you see that we have almost 300 billion cells dividing every day, 200 millions per minute. So if a wrong DNA, wrong cell, so tissue will be wrong, the function limb will be wrong, so you can understand the impact of single mutation, right? 
And similarly, if this mutation occurs during development, then it will give rise to genetic diseases, right? And genetic diseases are very serious. Okay? So let's uh, consider one of the uh, genetic disease, right? And that is uh, very well known and very prevalent and it's very tough. Um, so if you look at the sequence, so a normal sequence in a in normal individual, the DNA would read as GAG. So one of the strands would read as GAG, the other strand would read as CTC. Now a mutation occurs, and this is a single base mutation where a thymine is mutated to adenine. So look deeper, that's what I'm trying to communicate. So you don't only see that this is thymine, but you have to think at the back of the mind, this is pyrimidine. Thymine is pyrimidine, and this is changed to adenine, which is purine. So a, so a thymine is just one ring, and it is mutated to adenine, which is a bigger nucleotide molecule, double ring. So what happens? The impact would be when CTC becomes CAC, the mRNA sequence is changed also. So the wild type or the normal sequence will be GAG, whereas the mutant will be GUG. And what is the consequence? That in normal protein, the amino acid is glutamic acid. In mutant, it is valine. So now what is the difference between glutamic acid and valine? If you look carefully, the side chain of glutamic acid is negative, right? So a negative means uh, this negativity comes from C double O, C O O H. It's glutamic acid. Now this is it changes to valine, and this is nonpolar. So this is negatively charged. This is polar residue. It interacts with water, right? And this becomes nonpolar. Valine is a nonpolar. So this is a big change for a protein from a negative amino acid to, to the nonpolar amino acid, because of which the, 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 the structure of hemoglobin on normal blood cells from a spherical, it becomes sickle shaped. So again, what I meant to tell you in the beginning of my lecture, look at holistic, one nucleotide change from T to thymine, but impacts from T to adenine, thymine to adenine. What does it impact? It impacts the sequence of mRNA from GAG to GOG. How does that impact? Amino acid, right? So it's glutamic to valine. What is the impact? A structural impact. A negatively charged amino acid replaced by nonpolar. And because of which, so have a holistic approach. So one base mutation means point mutation. So T is replaced by A. So point mutation, this is a substitution mutation because thymine has been substituted or replaced by adenine. So number one, point mutation. Second, thymine to adenine, pyrimidine to purine. Such mutation is called as transversion. When a pyrimidine is replaced by purine or a purine by pyrimidine, this such kind of mutation is called as transversion. So point mutation, substitution, uh, transversion, and and this is a missense mutation. So we'll talk about it later, but this is what I'm trying to set a stage for learning a mutation to have a holistic approach. So just don't look at nucleotide, look at the consequences of mutation. Now, when you study a mutation, it is very important that you understand you have a, a very good grip on a genetic table. So genetic table lists what? Tri, you know, combination of trinucleotides into 64 conditions, situations, right? Out of this 64, three are stop codon, UGA, UGG, and the third stop codon is, so I repeat, UAA, 
UAG and UGA, three stop codons, so out of 64 triple nucleotide, which compose a genetic code table, three are stop codon and 61 are amino acids. Now you have to think that we have only 20 amino acids, but there are 61 situations. So which clearly means that amino acids are expressed or, or coded by more than one triple nucleotide. For example, leucine, proline. You see, they're coded by multiple triple nucleotides. So CUU, CUC, CUA, CUG, they all will code for leucine. Similarly, proline. So that's why 20 amino acids can be expressed or coded in, in uh, 20 amino acids could be in 61 different situations. Right. Now, uh, one of the basic things that you should know, fundamental, what is a reading frame? So a reading frame is a sequence of DNA that codes for RNA and protein. So if this is a sequence of DNA as TSC, triple G, triple C, triple T, triple A, and ACT, when it transcribes, it will be AUG, triple C, triple G, triple A, triple U, and UGA. Now when this translate, AUG will be methionine, which is the starting amino acid in maximum number of protein. Triple G DNA will make triple C RNA, mRNA, and proline. And then you go from starting to the end, and how you determine the end, end is by stop codon. Beyond this, there will be no amino acid. Now, this is the reading friend, frame of a protein. Now, there can be mutation due to which this reading frame could be terminated, or there can be a mutation where the stop codon is changed into an amino acid sequence. Right? So in both situations, mutations could be deleterious. So addition or removal. Now, addition of one nucleotide could be problematic. Addition of 10 nucleotide could be problem problematic. So mutations are, are unfortunate, but it happens all the time. And they have severe, severe consequences on human diseases, right? So uh, I just highlighted here glutamic acid, um, GAG, and valine, GOG. That's the you know, stereotype mutation for sickle cell anemia. I uh, advise you to watch this video that will make things more simpler. Now, what could be the causes of mutation? It could be uh, very um, straightforward. Uh, it could be spontaneous. It happens, uh, you know, random changes in the DNA because of replication, DNA polymerase, aging, uh, spontaneous, spontaneous mutation, it occurs, right? And if these mutations are not repaired, then there will be, there could be formation of tumor or cancer or some defects. Induced could be because to the exposure of mutagens, right? It could be, for example, let's say uh, if we are working on the lab in, the, in, a, in a molecular biology lab and we touch a bad reagent, right? For example, ethidium bromide, then ethidium bromide is a mutagen that can change the nucleotide of the DNA. Then for example, exposure to ultraviolet light or gamma radiation or X-ray. So all these can um, you know, damage our DNA. They can be genotoxic, right? So, so spontaneous mutation or induced mutations. So in here, let's look at some of the uh, induced mutagenic agent. So uh, number one, the, all these are very important one should, must know, and it should be on the fingertip for a student of biology major. So chemicals nitrous acid, I'll come back to you know, examples uh, in, next, in next couple of slides. So nitrous acid, it can remove amino group from some bases. So for example, if in cytosine, if an amino group is removed, deamination, then it gives rise to uracil. So think about the consequences that if there is a protein and there's a DNA sequence, it should have a G that should code for C. So if DNA has 
if DNA has um, if DNA has G, okay, it should code for uh, amino acid um, as an RNA C, right? But there could be a mutation due to which this C becomes U. So this will have a very bad impact. For example, let's say uh, there is an amino acid that is GAG, right? This will make uh, C, CU, C as a mRNA. And there is a nitrous acid exposure due to which C becomes U. So this will be U, U, C. Now this C, U, C This CUC should be isoleucine or leucine, but it becomes when it becomes UUC, there's a different consequence. So let's look at the, let's go back to the genetic code. Right? So uh, GAG. So GAG will be glutamic acid. So GAG will be glutamic acid. Right? So um, let's go back. So the DNA is GAG, the mRNA is CUC. So let's go back. So CUC will be isoleucine. CUC will be isoleucine. Now let's say the C has changed to U. So it becomes UUC. Because of nitrous acid exposure, this CUC becomes UUC. So leucine is replaced by phenylalanine. Now leucine is also hydrophobic. Phenylalanine is also hydrophobic. But if you look at the structure, if you look at the structure of, of amino acid, right? if you look at the structure of amino acid, um, such as um, phenylalanine, So let's look at the structure of, of phenylalanine, right? So let's pay attention here. So this is hydrophobic amino acid, leucine here, leucine. Now if it changes to phenylalanine, it becomes, it has a hydrophobic group as benzene ring or, or you know. So compare the structure of leucine and Phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is bulky protein, bulky amino acid. So this can have an impact on the structure of protein. And the, if the, pro, the structure of a protein is altered, then the function will be altered also. So reading frame is the sequence of nucleotide in the DNA, which can code for an mRNA that can subsequently code for a protein. And that starts with a starting uh, amino acid as methionine, and it stops with a stop codon. So this is a reading frame. So, uh, so let's um, go back. So nitrous acid will remove the amino group. So cytosine can become uracil. Ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide is one of the most um, dangerous chemicals that we used to work in a molecular biology lab because ethidium bromide can bind to DNA and make DNA fluorescence under UV light. So what ethidium bromide does, it, it inserts into between the bases of the DNA. It, I will come back to the structure. They look all very similar to the nitrogenous bases. So you know, uh, dodge the DNA and insert itself between the nitrogenous bases. And when something is inserted between the nitrogenous bases, you can imagine how replication will take place, how transcription will take place. So this is a mutation um, potential fountain for many types of mutation and each mutation can, be, uh, can give rise to uh, defective cells and that could be the beginning of tumor. Similarly, acaridine orange, it causes frame shift. So what does, what, what does frame shift means? Frame shift would mean that 
there can be addition or deletion of these reading frame. Within this reading frame, there can be addition. So let's say if there is an addition of one nucleotide here, right? Let's say A. So what will be the what will be the uh, the mRNA? It will be U. Now because of this addition A in the DNA, there will be an extra U. Now because of that, this stop codon will be removed, will be abolished. Now it will be it will be read as UUG instead of UGA. So UUG will be leucine. So a stop codon will be converted into leucine. So this is a frame shift. Similarly, consequence can, be, can happen if a base is de deleted. So let's say, take an example that a base is deleted. So let's say in triple A, an A is deleted. So there won't be U. So what will happen? This, this base, this, this triple nucleotide from double A will become triple A, making for a lysine and the stop codon is gone. So the whole frame has shifted. So a frame can be shifted by addition or deletion of nucleotides in the reading frame. So that's what acridin orange causes frame shift due to insertion between two bases. Acridin orange, nitrogenous base analogs. So they mimic the nitrogenous bases. So it can, it can dodge the DNA bases and these nitrogenous analogs can insert themselves in the uh, DNA. And then it can disrupt the replication and transcription. So these were chemicals, so nitrous acid, ethidium bromide, acridin orange, nitrogenous bases, they're all chemical that can induce, mut induce mutation. The second could be radiation, for example, ionic radiation like gamma rays, x-rays, they generate free radicals. And these free radicals are very reactive and because of them, it can cause, because of this free radical formation, it can cause single or double strand break in the DNA. And if there is a break in the DNA, there will be defective replication, defective transcription, and you don't know what pro protein will be produced. Ultraviolet light is very interesting. It causes a dimer between pyrimidines, particularly thymine. So it's called as thymine dimer. So we'll look into each case one by one. So this is a case with uh, nitro, uh, nitrous uh, acid, right? First example. Here, cytosine, it has an amino group, right? So this, cyto, this cytosine, which has an amino group, undergo deamination, removal of amino group, due to which there is a formation of uracil. So cytosine, by removal of amino group, generates uracil. So this will change the sequence of nucleotide in the mRNA, and then the protein will be altered. So this is the effect of nitrous acid. Let's look at another example. This is acridin orange, right? Acridin orange can insert itself. So look at the structure of acridin orange. So they are, they are also, acridin orange is also made up of or composed of, of you know, uh, cyclic ring, similar like pyrimidine or purine. So they can easily dodge uh, the nucleotide bases and they can insert themselves uh, in between nitrogenous bases. And this disrupt the sequence of nucleotide. And when the sequence of nucleotide is, is, is so pay attention to this figure, when the sequence of nucleotide is altered because of insertion of acridine or it, it causes frame shift. It can cause anything, frame shift, deletion, um, you know, and then from here starts the, the uh, incorporation of wrong bases, wrong replication, wrong transcription. So defective proteins, so acridin orange. Let's look at the example of ethidium bromide. Again, look at the structure of ethidium bromide. Uh, this is, this also contains of 
uh, cyclic um, ring-like structure. And this can again uh, insert itself between the two consecutive bases. So look here, it can, ex it can uh, insert itself in, in between two bases. This is called as intercalation between two bases, right? And when, uh, uh, when uh, ethidium bromide insert itself in the base, between the bases, it causes the, the DNA to become king-shaped. So look at the, look at the backbone of DNA. It is very stable, but when ethidium bromide insert itself at various position between the nucleotide, the DNA become kinky structure, which is unstable. And if the DNA is unstable, uh, think about how replication would occur, right? Now the next example, so we covered nitrous acid, we covered acridine orange, we covered ethidine bromide, and now the radiation, they, they are, they attack the DNA, and then it creates a single strand break or double strand breaks. In both the cases, uh, it, is, it is bad for replication and transcription and subsequent translation. Now, uh, as I mentioned to you, UV light, it creates thymine dimer formation. Two, two consecutive thymine, if they're together, when UV light falls on the DNA, it creates formation of covalent bond, which is very strong. So, so just recall that the two bases on the two strands of DNA, they are connected by hydrogen bond, right? And between two nucleotides, it is, the two nucleotides are connected by phosphodiester bond. But what if two bases, they, they, they form covalent bond? It is, will be very disruptive for the process of, of replication as well as um, transcription. So with this, um, so we covered uh, the chemical uh, mutation, nitrous acid, acridine orange, ethidium bromide, and then induced mutations by gamma radiation or radiation or ultraviolet light. So here, uh, let's look at some of the base analogs. So uh, a normal base is thymine, right? A thymine can be easily replaced by a base analog called as bromouracil, right? So just picture it. Uh, if thymine is replaced by bromouracil, what can happen? So thymine always hydrogen bond and hydrogen pairs, hydrogen bond pairing uh, with adenine. I repeat, thymine always paired with adenine through double hydrogen bond. But a bromouracil can, can disguise thymine, right? So, thymine, so a bromouracil in place of thymine could bond with A or it could bond with C. If it bonds with A, it could be okay, but if it bonds with hydrogen bonds with cytosine, then it's problematic. The sequence of DNA will change, the sequence of RNA will change, and protein will change. So these are base analog. So what is bromouracil? It is a base analog, and it can pair with a 50% chance, 50% chance it can pair with and pair with cytosine. Same is with adenine. Adenine 100% of the time should pair with thymine. But if the amino group is removed, right, or it is switch position from position six to position two, it becomes two amino purine. Now, again, this amino purine that should ideally be adenine should always bind to thymine, now has chance to bind to cytosine also. So two amino purine will bind to cytosine. So what will be the next? Um, so this C will then create a DNA strand with G because C complementarizes with G. So amino group that should, the adenine group that should with T now pairs with C because of, of you know, uh, this, uh, subs, this replacement. So it can create a, a problem. Now, uh, you have to pay uh, attention and I will go very slowly. And this, again, I said, 
the, from these um, mutations, you have to understand the sequence of RNA, you have to understand the sequence of amino acid and compare the structure of amino acid because of the problem. So how many, there are, there are many types of mutation. So let's start with simple transition. Transition is a type of mutation where purine is replaced by purine or pyrimidine is replaced by pyrimidine. So if a purine, a purine is, is replaced by So if a purine, so A is replaced by G or T by C, this is called as transition. A by G or T by C, right? Transversion, here purine is replaced by pyrimidine. So A is replaced by either T or A could be replaced by C. Similarly, a pyrimidine such as T could be replaced by A or by G. So, so again, what are these? These are single nucleotide changes, either transition or transversion. Transverse transition, purine to purine, and transversion, purine to pyrimidine. So this is single nucleotide change. Now remember my first example during the beginning of the chapter, I gave you about sickle cell anemia, where a glutamic acid is changed to valine. How does that happen? There's a single nucleotide chain, change. So let's go back to the first slide, just to recapitulate. So what happened here? CTC, which is normal, thymine is replaced by adenine, adenine due to which the sequence from CTC becomes CAC. Now what is the consequence? A normal RNA will be GAG, but a disease, you know, a mutated gene will have RNA as GUG. So what happens? T is what? Pyrimidine. What is A? Adenine. So a pyrimidine is replaced by purine. So this is a transversion. So sickle cell anemia is because of transversion where a pyrimidine, thymine, is replaced by purine, and due to which glutamic acid is replaced by valine, due to which the RBC becomes red blood cells that carry hemoglobin, becomes sickle cell. So um, this is one of the very um, you know, uh, important example to explain uh, transition and transversion. So sickle cell anemia, is a transversion where a single base change, T to A, so this is a point mutation, right? So T is replaced by A, meaning that T has been, thymine has been substituted by adenine. So this is transversion, this is a point mutation, and that is a substitution. Substitution of what? Thymine by adenine. Now, Let's consider uh, other two examples, deletion. Deletion is a situation where removal of one or, one or more bases occurs. Addition, where there's a one or more base is added. Sometimes addition is also called as insertional mutation. Right? So uh, let's look at the, so this is the same, um, same example, I'm just repeating. So when adenine is replaced by guanine, it is transition. When adenine is replaced by cytosine, it is transversion. When cytosine is replaced by thymine, it is transition. When thymine is replaced by guanine, it is transversion, okay? And this is the same situation here in the wild type, means in the normal situation, adenine pairs with thymine, right? So, but in mutation, an amino group is replaced by amino, uh, amino group, right? 
and because of that, adenine it binds to cytosine, right? To amino purin, and then this C will generate. So, so T A C G now becomes T G C G. So this is a wild type DNA sequence. T A C G. The complementary sequence is A T G C, right? And what's the starting point? This is the starting point. A T G C T A C G. So this becomes wild type. Now what happens? Unfortunately, this adenine becomes two amino purine. Now this has capacity to bind to cytosine. It could bind to thymine if somebody is lucky, but in unfortunate situation, this will bind to cytosine. And because it's cytosine here, this will be changed. So TACG, which was the starting point, becomes TGCG. It is very also important that we advise you that write down uh, the sequence of DNA and practice. Right? Mutation, the chapter on mutation is not hard, but it is a little bit tricky. So write it down, uh, take your time, look at the single bases, see uh, how RNA will be coded, how protein will be coded, and go back and forth. That's my advice. So let's uh, look at another example. So let's say this is UAA, which is a um, stop codon, right? Now, if U is changed to C, right? So, so pyrimidine changes to pyrimidine. So this is transition. So UAA becomes CAA. This will code for amino acid glutamine, right? So stop codon became glutamine. In second situation, UAA, A from A becomes G, right? So this again, UGA becomes stop codon. So although the sequence is changed, but a stop codon remains a stop codon. Third situation, UAA becomes UAG. So again, transition A to G, and it remains a stop codon. In transversion, U becomes pyrimidine to A purine. A to A purine to pyrimidine. Again, purine to pyrimidine. And this gave rise to these kinds of amino acid, right? So transition, uh, transversion could be point mutation, it could be deletion, it could be substitution, it could be insertion. Right? Same example here. So what is insertion? A single base is added to the sequence of DNA. Right? So this is nine bases, right, to start with. When it is added, it becomes 10 bases. When substituted, so when there is an addition, the number of base increases from nine to 10. So this is nine bases. Because of addition or insertion, it becomes 10 bases. So I can, in the exam, I can give you nine, a number of base pairs, and I will say what kind of mutation is this. So if there is an addition, you will say it's an addition or insertion mutation. If the number of bases remain the same, but there is exchange, there is substitution. So number of bases remain same, but the type of nucleotide is changed. So what is the change here? A to C. What is this change? This is a point mutation. What type of point mutation? Single base. What type of uh, mutation? This is transversion. Why transversion? Because purine has become pyrimidine, C. So total number of base remains, but the sequence of bases have changed. Deletion, removal. What removal? The number of bases have reduced from nine to eight. So in such kind of questions, you have to seriously focus on the sequence and the number of bases to give you the, to give the, or come to the right answer. Now let's look at other kind of mutations. Substitution, uh, nonsense, silent mutation, nuisance mutation, and frame shift mutation. So substitution, I already gave an example of sickle cell anemia. 
where uh, <clears throat> where a pyrimidine has changed to purine and because of that sequence of rna has changed and structure of protein is changed nonsense mutation nonsense mutation is a mutation where a triple nucleotide that would ordinarily generally would code for an amino acid now codes for a stop code nonsense mutation so a, a amino acid coding triple nucleotide becomes a stop code so uh, we'll, I'll show you the example. Then the silent mutation. I'll explain to silent mutation also, where the sequence of nucleotide has changed, but amino acid has not changed. Remember, I gave you, when I was talking about genetic code table, I mentioned to you that there are some situations where, where uh, multiple triple nucleotide can code for single amino acid. So let's focus here, right? Let's focus here. So CUU, CUC, CUA, CUG, all these four combination codes code for leucine. But if you see CUU to CUC, there is a different nucleotide, different sequence of nucleotide. So in a, in a context of a reading frame, this is a mutation. So this is a point mutation from CUU to CUC. What kind of point mutation? This is pyrimidine, this is also pyrimidine. So this is point mutation, this is a transition from pyrimidine to pyrimidine. And since amino acid remains, remain this, the amino acid remains the same, so this becomes silent mutation. Well, let's compare CUC and CUA. So let's say in the reading frame, it is CUC in the mRNA, but there's some transversion happens and C is replaced by A. So what is this? Point mutation, substitution, transversion, because from pyrimidine to purine, but amino acid remains the same. So this such kind of mutations are called as, as um, silent mutation. So change of basis takes place, but the amino acid remains the same. So let's go back. Um, Mesense mutation, Mesense mutation, a nucleotide has been replaced, amino acid has changed. So nonsense is generation of stop codon. Silent is Nucleotide has changed, but amino acid remains the same. In mesense, amino acid has changed. So you can say sickle cell anemia is a point mutation, it's a transversion, and it's a mesense mutation because glutamic acid has changed to valine. So this is a valine. So this is a mesense mutation, uh, sickle cell anemia. So let's look at uh, the category here, the silent mutation. GAA will code for glutamic acid. GAG will also code for glutamic acid. Amino acids have, amino acids are same. In both the situation, amino acid is same, but the nucleotide has changed from A to G. So this is a point mutation. This is a substitution and this is a transition, right? But this overall, this is a silent mutation because amino acid is changed. Let's see nonsense mutation. So the amino acid is GAA coding for glutamic acid. Now G has changed to U. What is this mutation? This is point mutation. This is substitution. This is transversion because the pyrimidine has changed, uh, purine has changed to pyrimidine. But what happens, UAA is a stop codon. So an amino acid has been replaced by a stop codon. This is called as nonsense mutation. Okay. Now let's look at mesense mutation. GAA codes for glutamic acid. GSC code for, codes for aspartic acid. So again, this is point mutation, substitution, transversion, 
And what is the outcome? Amino acids have changed. So this is called as mesense. So silent, nonsense, and mesense. Right? Now let's look at the frame shift mutation. So these are also examples of uh, mesense mutations, right? Where amino acid, uh, where the nucleotides have changed and amino acid is replaced from valine to leucine. So now let's look at uh, frame shift mutation. So ATG and here uh, a nucleotide called as G guanine has been deleted. And because of that, the freeding frame has changed from GAA now to AAG. So first, so the sequence was, wild type sequence was ATG, GAA, GCA, CGT. What were the amino acid? Methionine, glutamic acid, alanine, and glycine. Now because the G has been removed, deleted, you now have AAG, CAC, GT. So what's the new amino sequence of amino acid? Methionine, lysine. So glutamic acid is changed. So the whole frame is changed. Right? So that's called as frame shift mutation. Now let's look at more deeply. And it's very important to look at, uh, when you're looking at frame shift mutation, it's good to look at the genetic code. Right? So let's see an example. CAG will code for amino acid glutamine. Triple C will code for proline. ACU will code for threonine. This is an example of frame shift. So a nucleotide has been added, nucleotide A. Since single nucleotide addition, so it is point mutation, insertion, or addition. Now, the wild type was triple C. Now, when A is added, the new, the new frame is CAG, ACC, CAC. What's the consequence of amino acid? Glutamine, proline becomes threonine, and threonine, so histidine. So no more normal sequence of amino acid. Now, new amino acid. Why? Just addition of one base. So what is happening to the poor protein? The whole sequence of amino acid is altered. So this will be a defective protein. And if it's a cell cycle protein, then how it will monitor the cell cycle? So it's bound that say cell cycle will become abnormal. And when cell cycle becomes abnormal, it can give rise to any cancer. Now let's assume that two bases have been added two A's, again, there's a new sequence of protein, abnormal. But look something very interesting. When three bases are added, it leads to the addition of totally new amino acid, and then same sequence, proline. So glutamine, proline, and threonine. But when three bases are added, then an extra amino acid comes in between glutamine and proline, and then proline is followed by threonine. Same thing will happen when a single base is deleted. One by one, amino acid will be deleted and, and the frame shift will occur. Okay. So mutation could have a positive effect, a mutation could, could have negative effects. Uh, there are some positive mutations, for example, in HIV. If there is a mutation in CCR5 gene, then those cells may not be infected readily by HIV. So some mutations could be bad, as bad as sickle cell anemia. Some mutations like HIV is, in the CCR5 deletion, it is good. Uh, classically, uh, there is a, this is a list of very common uh, mutations occurring. And you should know this uh, table. So number one, adenosine diaminase, right? If, if this particular gene is deficient, right? Then it gives rise to severe immunodeficiency, right? And then uh, this can be treated by gene therapy. So ADA, if this enzyme is missing because of mutation, 
It could be any kind of mutation, point mutation, deletion mutation. It gives rise to severe immunodeficiency. So, so this is by birth, there will be defective lymphocyte and it cannot fight infection. X1 linked skid. And this is also sort of uh, skid stands for severe, C for combined, I for immunodeficiency. Skid is, is occurs because enzyme needed for maturing B and T cells is missing. It's primary immunodeficiency. Cystic fibrosis, right? Lack of necessary protein for conducting uh, chloride ion exchange across membranes that causes build of mu uh, mucus and secretion. So cyst cystic fibrosis, it is, uh, it, the gene responsible is CFTR, right? Uh, sickle cell anemia, uh, hemophilia. Uh, so let's look at uh, AIDS, right? So AIDS is caused by HIV. So what does HIV does? HIV integrates into the human genome. So HIV inserts itself. HIV genome is inserted. So this is an insertional mutation. So these are some of the well-known um, uh, mutations. Right? So again, um, uh, what I mean to say, have a holistic approach to study mutation. So with this, we finish the chapter on mutation and we go to the next chapter on DNA recombination, right? So a few most common uh, recombination is transformation. What is transformation? When a plasmid DNA is, uh, is, is, is shuttled into bacteria, right? You must, uh, this is an experiment where the, uh, so let me explain to you. So we are talking about uh, transformation. So uh, transformation occurs. So let's assume that this is a bacterial cell, right? And what happens that this is the plasmid, right? So this uh, plasmid can be inserted into or shuttled into bacterial cell with the help of two steps. Number one, uh, treatment of bacteria with calcium, uh, calcium, calcium uh, chloride. So when we treat bacteria with calcium chloride, this uh, generates a pores. So what does this, this calcium chloride does? It creates pores in the bacterial cell wall. Right? It creates pores, calcium chloride. Then the next step is, the second step is that we do give heat shock. What is it meant by heat shock? Treat the bacterial cells uh, at 42 degree Celsius. So you take the so you take the bacterial cell in a in a small tube. So let's draw the. Uh, so let's say this is a small tube, um, which we which you use in, which we use in the lab. A small tube. In this tube is your uh, bacterial uh, bacteria. Right? These are bacteria. So now you want to. Uh, insert plasmid into the bacteria, right? So first, what you do? You treat bacteria with calcium chloride. This calcium chloride would make the bacteria, bacterial cell porous, right? Then um, you can add plasmid or you can do this together. So you add small plasmid to the tube. You add plasmid. And so these plasmids, these plasmids are added with the bacteria. You can do it together or you can do it sequentially. Most people, they do it together. So you have bacterial cells 
which has already been treated with calcium chloride, made with porous, and they incubate this bacteria and plasmid together for let's say 45 minutes on ice. Then uh, you, you take a water bath. So let's say you, you have a water bath, which is the temperature is maintained at 42 degrees. So you take this tube, you take this tube of bacteria and put it in the uh, water bath at 42 degrees. So this, by this way, the plasmid can, this plasmid can enter into bacteria. So, so now the bacteria is inside the, sorry, the plasmid is inside the bacteria. So this plasmid, it carries an antibiotic resistance gene. So this bacteria can become resistant to, this bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotics. This is the basis for cloning. So you can have new gene into this plasmid and it can be put inside the bacteria to accelerate the production of plasmid. So that was transformation. Second, what is transduction? Transduction is exclusively uh, used when, um, when, uh, when, a, when a bacteria is, is um, infected with bacteriophage. So bacteria, we are lucky that we are not infected with, with bacteriophage. So let's say this is a bacteria, right? And um, when uh, bacteriophage, right? When a bacteriophage infects the bacteria, right? So bacteriophage has its DNA. So when bacteriophage attacks the bacteria, it inserts its DNA or, or transports its DNA to the bacterial body. Inside the bacterial body, the, 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 fa the phage DNA can take advantage of bacterial transcription and translation machinery and replicate. And after replication is enough so that bacteria cannot grow, the bacteria is, is completely killed by the bacteriophage. So there could be millions of bacteria coming out of, millions of bacteriophage coming out of bacteria. So transduction is especially, specifically used for, for phages that infect bacteria. So first is transformation, second is transduction. The third is conjugation. So, so bacteria, so this was about transduction and this is about uh, conjugation. So there are no uh, female or male bacteria, but there are some bacteria um, which have a special plasmid called as F factor. In addition to the main chromosome, these bacteria, they have F plasmid. They're called as F plus. So let's say called as male bacteria. So these male bacteria, they have sex pili or pillars. So through this pillars, this bacteria, bacteria F episome, F plus episome can, or F factor plasmid can transmit its, its sequence or DNA. So this is how the F factor you know, replicates and it is transported to the F minus bacteria and through sex pili. So this is also, this is conjugation. So bacteria as to, to revise, bacteria don't have male or female bacteria, but they could differ into male and female bacteria by the presence of F factor plasmid, right? And, and so this is a process of conjugation. This is also a process by which bacteria can communicate, uh, donate gene. Um, right? There are many bacteria, let's say in the soil, right? So how, how do the recombination takes place? So this could be one of the reasons by which antibiotic resistant bacteria could be evolving in our ecosystem. So this is the difference between the plasmid and the episome. So the plasmid is small, um, episome is larger than the plasmid. It can self-replicate, self uh, 
uh, episode may or may not self-replicate. So look at these differences. Right. So um, this conjugation can help in in spreading of antibiotic resistance gene. So the most important aspect of, of aspects, uh, most important aspect of of uh, recombination is what we study uh, during uh, meiosis, homologous chromosome, right? So uh, in, uh, it happens in prophase one and the two homologous chromosomes, they come and pair with each other, then they exchange genetic part uh, through crossing over tetrad formation and uh, so this is very specific. This is the basis for giving rise to diversity. That's otherwise all human beings would look the same, right? But because of crossing over that occurs in uh, prophase one, in meiosis one, um, in, and uh, um, crossing over happening in diplotene phase, it give rise to homologous recombination. But it doesn't happen haphazardly, but it's a very meticulous process and, and uh, it is, it is difficult to, to assume what kind of recom homologous recombination can, will take place because there could be, uh, there, there are 46 chromosomes, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes that can undergo homo homologous recombination in millions of ways. So it's very difficult to predict. And uh, so, so what happens that, that homologous chromosomes, they, they come and pair with each other, right? And then there is a nick by an endonu uh, by an uh, endonuclease, right? And this nick grows with the help of a nuclease, and then they look for homologous part. So let's say yellow uh, or orange is is maternal chromosome, the red is is paternal from father. So it, uh, a break could happen in, in either one of them. So let's say in this slide. The break happens in both the chromosomes, in maternal chromosomes. And when this break happened, the break is a little bit extended with the help of exonuclease, nucleus. And then this DNA then swap over the maternal chrom the paternal chromosome and they look for homology. And during this, when they find in homology, there is a DNA synthesis. And after that, there's a ligation and break happens. I don't want to go into the detail, but one of the hallmark of, of homologous recombination is holiday junction. So holiday, holiday junction is something like H-shaped when the recombination has taken place and now the DNA has to. So you have to remember that prophase one is such a short phase. And in that one of the phase where crossing over occurs and that homologous recombination occurs, it occurs very fast inside the cells. Right. So this is an example of non-homologous recombination. Non-homologous -hom recombination happens when there's a surprise damage to the DNA, breaking of the DNA. Then certain uh, non-homologous machinery, they, they spring up into action, KU70, uh, DNA, PKCS, are, are, are timers, and they try to uh, repair the non-homologous recombination. Um, the uh, you know the antibody production in our body there are milliards millions of pathogens and we have antibody to most of them or we generate when we encounter and that's also because of recombination that happens in the antibody gene. Okay. So now let's move to the last part of this chapter, DNA transposon. So what are transposons? Transposons are those genetic elements or those sequence of nucleotides that can jump from one gene to the next, right? So transposon can attach to the target DNA and then there can be uh, integration. So transposons are jumping gene that can go and insert themselves in the DNA. But think about a situation. So let's say this is a gene that codes for a protein if transposon goes and insert itself in a functional gene, and the sequence of amino acid is disrupted, the protein is, is damaged, right? So transposons are jumping genes that can go and insert itself any part of the chromosome, 
but it, if it occurs in a very important protein, such as cell cycle protein, it could be detrimental to the cells. So the second uh, kind of transposon is called as retrotransposon. So these are RNA retro means uh, uh, connect and uh, try to remember this with reverse transcription retro, right? So, uh, so retro is, it helps, it needs RNA polymerase for replication. And after a replication, uh, then it is converted to cDNA, copy DNA by enzyme called as reverse transcriptase. And then it inserts itself into the host DNA. So two kinds of transposome, DNA-based transposomes or RNA-based transposomes. RNA-based transposomes are called as retrotransposomes. They need enzymes, RNA polymerase for replication, reverse transcripts, trace to convert into DNA and integrate into the DNA. So with this, uh, we finish this chapter.